at least. I mean, in Germany, if you don't have your website in German, just forget about it. The same with France. It's, if it's not in French, they're not going to buy it, and they won't buy it. So in the same in Spain and, and a lot of European countries, I mean, if, so if you want to do business in those countries, you need to really sit down and say, okay, the language, the payment system, and the culture-wise, I mean, so do you have the same website like in .fr, .gr, .fr? Yeah, 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 yeah what you do, so, that, so that any but any customer looks at your site and thinks that it is a yeah. Franco yeah. cloud, a Franco company yeah, yeah, or German. Yeah, yeah. So we, we we do that. Okay. We have supporters and so all those So basically, it's 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 not that it's a um, one country specific business. What you're doing is creating the illusion yeah. that 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 company is specific and you need to, to that country, that. so that. The individual feels like, oh, I'm buying from France, or yeah. oh, I'm buying from. And Germany. the good thing for us is we are from such a small country that we actually understand that. I mean, it, it, I mean, if well, you it makes sense, you grow up you, thinking you that you have to know at You're least small. Like, two or three different languages yeah, yeah, versus yeah. Americans. We think English, and if I get to it, maybe I learn Spanish or French or German. Just, or just Chinese, imagine right? one of our great markets is Mexico. You say Mexico. Really? That's I would never have guessed that. But just imagine. There's 100 million people in Mexico, and more than 20 million of those people have a living standard as high or higher than the Danish population. But what, what is Denmark selling to Mexico or vice versa? We sell software. software 20 right. million people in Mexico have laptops, have Mercedes, have credit cards, are living a high society life. Yeah, you would think about the 80 million people that live in slum or shoot each other or drug cartels or whatever. Yeah. But just in Mexico, more than 20 million people has the same living standard as in America or Denmark with credit cards and so on. Just imagine that's 20 million people that get neglected. How many companies, American companies, are actually translating anything to Spanish? I mean, they don't. They just don't do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, do anybody know which payment system they have in Mexico? Right. The same. One of the really great countries we deal with is Brazil. That's. Well, Brazil's sell, going crazy, aren't we they? We sell a lot of software in Brazil, right? The funny thing is, if you divide, the, we know exactly what the conversion rates are because Spain file is a free product, but you can upgrade to a little bit better version. And in all, it's five percent that operates. That's the the, the, the And if you look at so ninety-five percent buy the free version, yeah, they can just get the free version, and five percent will upgrade to the yeah, they will upgrade. Okay. But the interesting thing is that if you look at Denmark, for instance, seven or eight percent will upgrade. That's the same in Switzerland and several European. I mean, uh, Sweden, Norway, and so on. America, five six five six percent or so. Then you look at countries in Southern Europe. Let's say Poland, Czech Republic, and so on. That's maybe zero point one percent. Why so low? Uh, China zero point one percent. Russia zero point one percent. Because they can pirate it. They pirate it. They, okay. I mean, or I mean, they just look at it and they say, hey, I mean, what do I want? Food or a piece of software that prevents spam? I mean, so it's it's pirating. It's it's they don't have the money. But the interesting thing is, mm. if you take South America, it's three percent. That's the same good. demographics. Yeah, three percent. I mean, America is six percent, right? But three, it's not that bad. And wow. I think a lot of American companies actually neglect. I mean, don't think about. They just think of South America as oh, that's a lot of poor people fighting or doing drugs or whatever they do. I mean, why bother? Yes, it's definitely worse than doing business in 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 North America, but it's half. And just imagine how many people. And it, it, people, it, how many, how many, just uh, take Brazil, that's Portuguese. We have Spain fight on Portuguese, we sell a lot of software in, in, in Brazil. Mm -hmm. But how many uh, North American companies would translate their software or services into Portu 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 Portuguese? Right. Not that many, right? Yeah. So I think uh, a lot of North American companies, they, they miss out on huge opportunities, uh, opportunities around the world. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's, I feel it's a bit arrogant, to be honest. Um, or or it, it, it's some arrogant and some not knowing. I mean, it's, it's a yeah, lack yeah, well, of knowledge. I think, I think that's also, I mean, there, there's a lot of perspective that Europeans think they're much more worldly as a general. You know, that's, whether it's right or wrong. have to. But hang on, so so when I think about the United States, I think about most of us thinking there's such a huge market here. To your point, we don't have to think about other markets. I mean, you, you think about, if you're if you're American, you think about, okay, U.S. first, and then you think about Spanish as a second language. And I, and I would hazard to say, as a lot of Americans don't realize, that Brazil speaks Portuguese, to your point, mm. versus Spanish. And I think the <coughs> question is, is like, it's got to be a a cost-benefit analysis, if you switch into those multilingual characteristics, what's the bang for the buck versus staying in the English language markets. But but I would concur that there's definitely an American-centric perspective with many businesses 
where, where they think that it's far easier and it's, oh, it's too difficult to go into a different language versus a European mm -hmm. country where you're born multilingual and born multi-country perspective, it's easier for you to get into that thought process that your business has to be the same way versus an American is not brought up and doesn't have that same mm. thinking process going through schools and universities that you would in Europe. But I'm just thinking there's so many opportunities because, oh, I, think you're right. I mean, the American market is super competitive. It I is. mean, obviously, a billion people who <laughs> wants to enter the market and everybody wants to do better and faster mm. and cheaper and so, where a lot of those countries around the world actually, they might be, not be that big, but competition is lacking. One of the best markets we have overall is Holland. I mean, uh, it, we, I mean, we, we, I think at some point we had 30% 30, 30 of our uh, revenue come, coming in for that country yeah. because it's, it's not that many people. I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's I think 10 million people or something like that. But they're super advanced. They have a lot of money. They really want to buy uh, software. But nobody who would ever translate anything into Dutch. I mean, they, the people just don't do that. Mm -hmm. And Dutch people, they can speak English, and they well, they might as well buy English software. But if they can choose well, what would you take I mean even though you let's say you were fluent in Spanish or whatever but English was your main language if you would choose between two software packages well, so you feel I mean, like it's supporting your country in your country's yeah, language and it's that just a, yeah and then you feel a little bit more yeah I mean, you feel a little bit more nice and yeah. you, you understand it a bit better and you feel a little bit more secure because obviously, obviously if you sit as an American and, and buy a service from another country obviously you'd be skeptical I mean what are the laws in that country and will it spy me and will they yeah. deliver and what if I don't like it blah 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 I mean you don't know which laws they govern uh, the, and all these things I mean uh -huh. so if you can be lured into thinking that this is actually made in your own country I mean not lying in anything but it is presented I think that's it's like a, it's putting the, the lipstick on the model so to speak right yeah, I, mean, I mean it's the same product but you're, you're dressing it up so that, yeah. it, that it looks better and feel I, also I PR wise that. also PR wise it's yeah. much easier to get press if the, sure. if, 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 the, if the press think it's a local company and uh, you set up and, a little and, office and follow through with and the just service. imagine Google Absolutely. I mean the search engines I mean they pick up the language thing and the, you'll, you'll, you'll you, you rate higher on the local search from that country I mean it's it's so you can uh, you can uh, link build and, and in, in that specific mm -hmm. country and, and in, in Holland when they search for spam fillers is, is called I, don't, I will break my tongue if I try to pronounce it it's a very crazy word but when they search for that right. it's, it's, it's so it makes a, a lot of sense to to translate into different countries uh, to languages and try to embrace the culture a little bit not too much but just try to understand what's going on and, 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 and I'm sure a lot of American companies can do extremely well in, in, yeah. in, in around the world I, I think that um there's a lot of American companies who could really get a lot out of what you just said. Let, let me ask you one question. Mm -hmm. So over the past year, what's the most interesting Danish entrepreneurial company you've seen as far as a product or service? What, what is there one or two that really stood out to you and said, wow, that, that either breaks the mold or it completely changes the, the playing field for a particular product or service? Is there anything that's really stood out to you? Yeah, but there's a couple. I mean, uh, to be honest, I'm not that focused on the. That sounds maybe a big bit bit strange. Uh, I'm not that focused on the few companies that do pretty well. I mean, uh, well, I'm what, seeing not so much pretty do well. well, well one of them is, but what is it that's a game changer well, that you? Yeah, see? one of them is is, is is a company called Trade Shift, for instance, uh, which is is actually try to make social media with uh, paying bills. Okay. Uh, that's that's a very interesting. They got I think a hundred. Was it a hundred? Was it twenty million dollars or hundred million dollars out of from eBay, um, which which is super super interesting. I mean, and they, I mean, it, the whole thing is it making a, a global platform for making it easier to pay bills. So if you have a if you have a company, it takes two minutes to to make an account, and suddenly you can invoice through email, and uh, uh, the vendors can reply on this, and you can see if they paid. And it, it's it's it, it 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 sounds very basic, but it is very How's it basic. different from PayPal? Uh, well, I mean, it's um, it's um, it, it interfaces with a lot of different financial systems, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the whole idea. I mean, I'm, I'm not a super expert in the in the in the actual service, but the, the whole idea is that you're making a community with your with your vendors uh -huh. and your customers so and so on. Media perspective yeah, there's a social yeah, media yeah. thing in, in in that, and that's growing very very fast. And another one is Podio. 
which I haven't looked extremely much into, but uh, it's 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 uh, it's 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 like a company. It's like Facebook for companies. It's uh, it's it's it, if you think of a Facebook and then put it into a company, so the company can can um, it's a project management tool. It's a tool for communicate inside the company. It's like an intranet actually, mm -hmm. but uh, it's very open, so everybody can write apps and uh, it has a great API, so you can write things into that. And give, so that that's that's that they all also got extremely well funded. So is that uh, kind of like the the LinkedIn for companies? Yeah, Facebook. For the yeah, I think they call it more Facebook. I think it's more LinkedIn. I don't see LinkedIn. Uh, obviously, it's social, but it's not as social as Facebook. And I think it's more like it's it's got got a more LinkedIn is a business. This is who I am. As, as something like that. Where Facebook is more like it, my feeling is more like what's going on in the company yeah, and, my and job exchange stuff right here right. and then. Uh, so it, that that is growing. They have an office in San Francisco, by the way, and uh, I think Trade Shift has as, as as well actually. So they're doing pretty well. And one of the one of the I mentioned before, one of the the few we're really proud of is obviously Skype. It's it's not a company based out of Denmark because that would be stupid tax wise. So that's a Swedish guy and a Danish guy who made it. I think it's based out based off of Luxembourg. They sold it to uh, eBay and bought some of it back and sold it again to Microsoft and. But uh, that 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 hasn't been a, a tremendous success. But unfortunately, that is a company that uh, that that didn't uh, that wasn't Danish, <laughs> even though uh, the two founders were Swedish and and, and Danish. But um, well, but that makes sense. I mean, piece of work. Yeah, it's one of the things where even in the United States, you're looking at which which state do you incorporate in order to take the tax yeah. advantages to that. So that that makes perfect sense uh, to me. So to wrap up this interview, you know, you're on this six month. It's almost like an odyssey. It sounds to me like it'd be great fun to meet mm -hmm. all these people and, and get that great perspective on how each individual is looking at their company mm -hmm. and how they look from that mm -hmm. company to the rest of the world. What are you hoping to find over the next four months or so of your of your trip? Of your adventure, I guess, is the way to yeah. put it, right? Well, I mean, the goal of the, the whole trip and the, all the video interviews are to inspire Danish entrepreneurs to think bigger. I mm -hmm. mean, to to see there's a world out there. I mean, the world doesn't have to, to, to build a small thing in Denmark. Uh, why not uh, move to Australia or New Zealand or Hawaii or try to, to try to look at the world. I mean, see what people have done. I mean, I've talked, as a, we're going to talk to an undertaker in, uh, in, in Hawaii. We're going, we, we've talked to a magician in Miami. We talked to a, a race driver in San Diego. Right. Uh, in a couple of days, we're going to talk to uh, an, an inspirational, motivational uh, speaker who is do, uh, doing a lot of uh, uh, CDs and, and stuff. Lives here in San Francisco, right? And we're going, to, we're going to talk to a lot of different entrepreneurs. And the whole idea is to, to tell the Danish entrepreneurs, you don't have to be super smart. You don't have to be a wonder, a wonder kid or whatever to actually embrace the world. Go out and make a fabulous company somewhere in this world. Mm. It just takes uh, a, 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 it just takes imagination, a lot of hard work, and, um, and of course a bit of luck. But uh, you don't have to have a brain the size of uh, a, a, <laughs> yeah. Uh, as, as a car, I mean, you, you just need to put in a lot of hours and uh, have fun with it. And uh... well, that actually leads to a, a great question here. When I think about a lot of the Australian entrepreneurs that come to me, they think, "Oh, I've got to move to Silicon Valley to raise capital to build a business." Hmm. And usually, what I recommend hmm. to them, and not all the time, but most of the time, is said, "You need to build a business in Australia. Get your first sales there. Get up and running. Hmm. Make sure that the, the idea number one works. Number two." you have a profitable way of doing it, number three, that you can expand internationally with that. If you're, a, if you're talking to a, a, a Denmark entrepreneur, mm. you know, obviously Australia is 20 million people, Denmark's 5 million people, mm. would you have a similar perspective or would you think differently no, it's 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 very similar. I mean, it's um, I, if I tell them, I mean, don't think of, the problem is if you're thinking tax wise and everything from start, you're never gonna fly. I mean, it's, it's 
way too expensive. Moving to Silicon Valley, hiring people in Silicon Valley, tax-wise, getting everything in order, and so on. then every all the money is gone and you're you're dead. I mean, don't think about it. Get your business going in Denmark. But why not make if it's software? Why not make the first version in English? I mean, instead, but but keep it in Denmark. Mm. Start it out, and when you feel it, it it, it works, and so then you Plus can start network, thinking. Your networks in Denmark, so you know yeah. which people to to tap or what knowledge. To make things happen. Yeah, right? there's a lot of high educated, well, very well skilled workers in Denmark. I mean, it's not a problem finding programmers or uh, designers or whoever you need. So, I mean, start it out in Denmark and see what happens. And if you if you have the need to 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 go elsewhere, then do it afterwards. I mean, do it when you make money and uh, have everything going because mm -hmm. it's um, if. It, it, Take your idea and, and, and do something. And if you if your dream is going to Silicon, by any means do that. If that's your dream, right, but right. if your dream is making a, a great business, so make it where you you live. And uh, as uh, actually, you can always move later, right? Nick, Nicholas Sinstrom, which is the other founder of uh, of Sky, said in a, in a, in a very cool speech he gave in Denmark, I think a year ago. Uh, five years ago, Silicon Valley was in Silicon Valley. Today, Silicon Valley is all over the world. It doesn't really matter if it's been seen in Greenland or wherever, because we're so networked today, so it doesn't really matter. So Silicon Valley is everywhere, and uh, I think that's very true. I would agree with that, and I think there's a lot of um, American entrepreneurs that could uh, learn a lot from some of your ideas. Martin, I really appreciate your time today. Give a, a quick shout for SpanFighter.com. Is that the URL for that's, your company? That's true, yeah. And we'll look forward to seeing you on Facebook with the many interviews. And if you speak uh, Danish, there's a lot of good things coming over the next four months. Thank you, Martin. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. You have a great day. Thanks, Martin. You too. This is David Brown from International Market Entry Strategies. Thanks and have a good day.